It's a Gibson CS356 custom shop. Uh, it's here for minor repair. Uh, just something about the switch. I had to clean it. I already finished. Uh, looks like this. Quilt maple top. Um, so why don't we throw it on the bench and I'll show you the guitar. This is a Gibson ES335. Um, it's a popular model. Gibson also made a 330, a 345 and a 355. They all look kind of like this. Um, and they all have one thing in common. They're kind of big, but they look good. Uh, so for years, Gibson players have been wondering if Gibson was ever going to make a smaller version of a 335. And one day, they finally did. They made a 339. And in this case, we're going to look at a 356. Not an ES, but a, a CS. Uh, it's a custom shop model. You'll see. Um, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, before you sign a contract, make sure you read the fine print. And I'll take you to the shop and you're going to see why that's important. So welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where uh, you should always read the fine print before you sign. Yeah, man, I have a new policy. When you bring a guitar like this to this shop, I keep it. Company policy. It's all in the fine print. You got to read it before you sign. We're going to do a little review. Uh, maybe we start with uh, a little bit of a, you know, overhead shot. That's what the guitar looks like. Okay. Mahogany. Mahogany neck. Custom shop logo. Block inlays. Ebony fretboard. Plastic. Plastic. Wood. Plastic. Metal. Okay. Metal frets. Okay. So now, let me show you some extreme close-ups. It's got to be worth your time. Okay, so it's got the Gibson nibs. Okay. Uh, well, it's not a brand new guitar, so this is how it ages sometimes. Nothing to get worked up about. This is an excellent guitar. Uh, this nut, I got to tell you, it's a really good nut. Um, we got some natural aging here on the logo. All right. I didn't put these strings on. The customer brought it in for a repair of the switch, which I repaired already. Uh, gold hardware on this one. I didn't do any work on it other than the switch yet. Maybe I will do something. I don't know yet. It's got a quilt. Oh, it's solid maple. So you can tell. Uh, if you look at the um, cut here, you can see that um, you don't see any layers like you would on a ES-335, right? So it's a one, well, it's a book, book matched maple top. Now, the back, let's look at the back. So here's the thing, there's binding on the back, but this is a one piece hollow mahogany back. It's a mahogany neck. Now, that's the logo from the custom shop. And this is what we would like to see on the back of the neck. You see this uh, pattern that, that goes this way? That's uh, That means that this piece of wood is quarter sawn because we are seeing this in the center. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we can see from this end that it's quarter sawn. Maybe with more light. I'm not sure. 
but we can see it here definitely. It's a quarter sawn piece of mahogany. Now it does go a little bit off center here, but that's the nature of wood. You can see here the growth rings going like this, which confirms that it's quarter sawn. Quarter sawn is, uh, well, the best kind of wood you can use for a neck. This is a really well-made guitar. Um, as I was uh, fixing the switch, so all it needed was a little cleaning. Uh, the contact pads had a little, you know, buildup of oxides. So I removed the switch and then I, I cleaned it with the oxid, put it back. Uh, yeah, too bad I didn't record this on video, but it's already done now. Look at this guitar. All right. Very nice looking guitar. You can see every detail of it. I'm gonna give you another last close-up view of the components. All right. This is what it is. Okay. Now, I think I'm done with this camera. Let's turn it off. Let's have a look at the specs of this guitar. So once again, I did not touch the setup. Uh, here we have a, a straight edge and we have a set of feeler gauges. All right. Um, I always like to check the frets before I uh, measure the neck relief. So the neck relief uh, can be measured in many different ways. I measure the neck relief on the eighth fret and I always do it on the bench and I place the neck rest right here. Okay, so that we don't add additional relief. So let's see if the eighth fret is even. It is, let's check the adjacent frets. All right, we're gonna measure um, the distance on the nut. So I wanna make sure that these frets are even here. They are. Honestly, uh, I, checked all the frets prior to recording this video they are perfect so now let's measure our relief if we have even frets and if we don't have a twisted neck or anything of that nature i like to get my relief to six one thousandths of an inch on the eighth fret so let's see where it's at right now it's a straight edge, six one thousandths, does not pass. So the next one down is five one thousandths of an inch. It's passing, but six, oh, it is passing. All right, scraping, okay. So now let's uh, measure the relief on the other side. Let's start with the same six one thousandths and it's passing, all right? Let's try the next one up, which is eight one thousandths, does not. And, you know, here, obviously eight one thousandths does not pass either. So, uh, we do have a symmetrical uh, fretboard, okay? Next. I'd like to have a closer look at the nut. So why don't we uh, do it this way this time? Okay, I'm just gonna put the guitar over here and position the camera this way. All 
I'm going to use one of my favorite tools, which is um, the dial indicator. Uh, you've seen me do this in other videos. If I push the string down against the second fret, I use the dial indicator to measure this gap that remains between the first fret and the string. So first we confirm that there is in fact a gap and I could feel that it was scraping. Uh, so, so the gap is very small. And let's start with the first string. We might not even be able to measure it. So let's see. Almost nothing, which is perfect. Okay, very little gap. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. So on this string, oh, this string seems to be lower. I can't measure it. And here, same situation. There's a little bit of a wiggle here on this string, but we do have a gap on the D string. It's scraping, so I can, I can feel there's a gap, but it is scraping. And you can also do a tap test. So I am feeling that there's a tiny little gap. Now let's have a look at the nut. Like I said, I looked at the nut already, and it's, uh, well, I'm impressed with the work. Uh, this was done by uh, someone very experienced. So here it is. Uh, we see the first string. It's nice and tight at the front. Second string is nice and tight at the front, but there's a obvious little slack at the back end. Same with this one, G string. We have a nice and tight string on the front. Let's go over to this string. Let me get it in focus. Nice and tight. A little slack at the back. Tight at the front. Look at that. Perfect nut. Really, no complaints about this nut. Uh, or anything else about this guitar. Now, I did fix the switch. It's a, I believe it's a Switchcraft brand. Uh, but, you know, that happens. It's just regular maintenance. What else can I show you on this guitar? Um, I don't believe the intonation is uh, dialed in correctly. It's probably going to play a little flat on the high E string from the looks of it. I got to talk to the customer. I don't know if he wants to do a setup or not. Um, I'm really busy at the shop now. I already fixed the switch. I, th I think... I think I'm going to leave it at it as is, or, or maybe I'll just dial in the uh, uh, saddle on the high E string just just, just because. Uh, maybe we should plug it in. How about that? Here is, well, I just got a little Fender amp for testing. Yeah.
it works as expected. I don't think I got anything else to show you about this guitar. All right? Yeah, man. If you're subscribed to this channel, uh, which obviously you should be, uh, you might have been wondering why haven't I put out more videos for you to watch. Well, everything takes time. And speaking of time, let me show you what time it is. Oh, look at that. Okay. And that's not PM. That's AM. And I'm still working. Working on what? Well, <laughs> obviously working on this video that you are watching. Recording, editing, color correcting, sound, thumbnail, this, that, and the list goes on. Yeah, everything takes time. And before I started working on this video, tonight, earlier tonight, I was working on this. Okay, a full refret of a GNL. Okay, and guess what? There's a video of this project also coming up whenever I find the time to put it together for you. Yeah, so, uh, and by the way, you know, while I'm trying to work on YouTube videos, my customers keep calling. Oh, excuse me. Guitar Quackery. Uh, no, it's not ready yet. It will be ready when I'm done. Yeah, I'll call you. All right, thank you, bye. Nah, what I tell you? Yeah, so, uh, if you like, these videos, uh, just make sure you click mm, the like button, you know, so that YouTube knows what kind of videos to recommend to you in the future. And also click the share button. That's important. This way you help this channel grow so that other people like you can watch videos just like you. And, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and if you feel that I've earned a coffee or if you just want to buy me a coffee to keep me up at night so that I can edit more videos for you to watch, uh, you know, uh, you can click the button that says buy me a coffee. Thank you. Yeah, it's below. You can find it easily. It says buy me a coffee. Uh, and speaking of links that you can click, uh, you can also click on some links to buy Guitar Quackery merch, you know, like t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs, and things like that. And all the proceeds are going to be used to finance of the production of these videos that you like watching, right? So what else can I tell you? Well, I don't know. Just thank you for watching this video and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Well, I mean, I won't see you. You will see me. But, you know, it's just a figure of speech. Yeah, you know what I mean.